The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Wrestling to the Max, Monday Night Raw, Review. Welcome everybody to Wrestling to the Max's Raw Review for August 28th, 2017. And of course, we are brought to you by W2Mnet.com. That's right, the place you go find all our great content. Hey, and also a big shout out to 411mania.com and last one on sports.com. Both are awesome and you need to go check them out as well. Hey, if you want to go rate, subscribe, and review over there at Wrestling to the Max, that'll do you a favor and us a favor. Yeah, that's right. When you hit five stars, that gives everybody out there a chance to hear our content. And when you hit those ratings, I know, of course, that also you know lets us know what you think with a comment also. So make sure you go do all that. We appreciate you if you've already done it. W2M Network is also a place where you can go find not only just this show, but all the other great stuff over there at the W2Mnet.com family. I, am, of course, am Gary Vaughn. And your host tonight, Mr. Paul Leeser. hey And Paul, we've got a Raw to talk about that has lots of dips and dives and all that, you know, really what usually does go with Monday Night Raw. But before we, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But before we jump into that, I, I do want to send out a special, you know, wishes, hopes, and prayers to all those over there in South Texas that are dealing with this Hurricane Harvey situation. As you saw on Monday Night Raw, everyone, you know, this is a pretty huge deal. It's going on. It has not stopped. It's a continual problem. And um, me and Paul are actually in North Texas. So it, it's not the fact that we're affected primarily because the weather is not like it is down there. But we do get affected through family and friends. And mm-hmm. I, I know I personally have a ton of people. I forgot how many people I had down in South Texas until this whole thing went down, Paul. Um, and I'm sure you're affected somewhat, aren't you? Or, or do you have family? I, yeah, a lot of uh, – both my parents' sides of the family is actually down Houston way. I have some friends that live down there. Uh, one stayed behind because she owns a business down there, and um, both her her dad's house is completely fl- flooded. They li- or He lives in Dickinson, and her place is fine, but the business has taken uh, a lot of damage, unfortunately, from all the flooding. So uh, it, it's a situation that uh, I, I know – I'm sure a lot of people have kept an eye on, but for sure at least those in here in Texas – uh, yeah, definitely had our eyes closed to that TV screen or the internet or however you get your news. Exactly. And, you know, once again, I mean, if you live in a different country and this is not, you know, something you may have heard of or maybe you heard a little bit of it, this is something that definitely affects us. And, uh, by the way, I need to mute my phone for some reason. Gary decides <laughs> not to put his phone on silent when he's doing a show. And I Stone Cold would over body a beer, and maybe I do too. Uh, but, you know, the one thing I just want to make sure everybody knows is, you know, we do really hope that everything gets better and we're really, you know, putting our hearts and prayers into this thing because it really does affect a lot of people and like paul and i just kind of told you guys i mean this is really cutting close to home because we have family friends and everybody involved so there you go and make sure you do if you have the opportunity we want to encourage you and we'll try ourselves make sure you donate to the red cross any other place that you can find you know donate to hurricane harvey and the victims because this is uh, it's giant this is not just a small thing this is a huge deal so Mm -hmm. well uh, you know uh that's our public service announcement for today um um, Paul, I think we can talk some Money Not Raw now. I think we can, uh, as much as I, I kind of don't want to, because this one was uh, a rough three hours to sit through. Uh, they open, first of all, Jerry the King Lawler is here for commentary, seeing as Booker T is stuck in Houston due to uh, Hurricane Harvey, of course. Uh, he's sticking it out down there with his family. Uh, and, of course, seeing as they're here in Memphis, here comes Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, then we open with The Miz talking about the Intercontinental Championship, and how he wants a bigger spotlight for it. So uh, Kurt comes out and says, it's going to be on the line at No Mercy, and right now there's going to be a number one contender's battle royal to decide who gets that match uh, next week instead of at No Mercy. So uh, maybe building up here, but we get this battle royal. It's got Finn Balor, it's got Bo Dallas, it's got Curtis Axel, Big Show, both of the Hardys, Jason Jordan, R-Truth, Goldust, Kurt Hawkins, Paula Cruz, Kalisto, Gallows and Anderson and Elias Sampson. 
And, uh, boy, this one was a bit of a drag to sit through, if you ask me, Gary. Not a whole lot going on. It's basically wasting time. All the way up until we get to the end, uh, you have Jeff going to town on Finn and uh, Jason Jordan. Uh, here comes Bray Wyatt to toss out Finn Balor because for some really god-awful reason that I'm sure Creative has, they decide they need to keep this thing going. Jason Jordan gets some revenge on the Mr. Oz by eliminating them, uh, but then here comes Jeff Hardy to toss him and Mr. Elias Sampson out, and that's all she wrote. Jeff Hardy gets the Intercontinental Championship max next next week, and uh, man, this is uh, this was some rough stuff, if you ask me, Gary. <laughs> Oh, Gary. I'm oh. sorry. I, I'm oh. making sure that, uh, yeah, when you hit your mute button because you're turning your phone down, you forget to turn it off. Uh, <laughs> all sorts of fun things over here on my end. You know, I'm trying to help you guys when I'm having to hear my phone blow up, and then <laughs> I, I screw myself. Uh, no, you're right. Exactly. Everything you said is pretty much on key on this because I – I really thought, okay, great, Miz starts the show and, you know, gives a spiel and then the Kurt Angle kind of comes out and, to be honest with you, kind of bores me. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the match that you would think would be a lot of fun, like, oh, yeah, we get a battle royal and it just was kind of, huh, you know. uh, You know, and so that's just, it it really was not that great of an open here. I think some of the conclusive moments kind of was kind of cool. I mean, the one thing, you know, at the beginning of the match, I will say that I kind of thought was funny, and it's very minuscule. This is looking through a magnifying glass, but kind of thought it was fun to see Finn and the brothers, uh, Gallows and Anderson, kind of hanging out together for a second there, just to kind of tease, right? Just kind of, mm-hmm. yeah, this could be something, and then move on from there. So like that little part. Uh, but the end was the best, I think. Uh, really, you felt like Jason Jordan was going to be destined to win this. They looked like they were setting him up to be the guy to win the Rumble. And then go and face that guy, the Miz, the one that you know he's been teasing us a lot about, that they were going to finally you know get this thing going. And then it's Jeff Hardy who wins. And I love that kind of swerve. I think it's good. They need to do that on a more regular basis because then you get a chance to see things that don't really have the – penciled in uh, Mm -hmm. effect so i like that i I thought that was fine the end of it worked the rest of it was just kind of blah and i hate that i really do because i think when you start to show off really hot and get things going it helps to take care of the things that kind of let you down later and to let you down this early it really kind of made me kind of sad i think if you shave five minutes off this match you have a much better battle much better battle royal excuse me Uh, And maybe they were playing for time here because, really, this show was kind of sparse as far as stories they're covering. But uh, this, I don't know, length certainly hurt this. I got no problem with Jeff getting the championship match next week. Like you said, it's a fun surprise. And with the Revival being injured, it's not like the Hardys are doing much anyways. And we all know how much WWE has loved Jeff Hardy in the past. And uh, doing this now is is fine. And I'm actually kind of interested to see him work with The Miz, honestly. So... Uh, can't say I'm not looking forward to that, uh, but I think you're right. I, I, we all know Jason Jordan is probably going to end up getting that Intercontinental title match, come no mercy. Yeah, uh, you know, that's going to be pretty much, you know, something that we're going to get, but, you know, uh, we're also getting other things that I don't really care about. Once again, Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt, you've mentioned it earlier, I didn't touch on it, but I'm thinking to myself, why? Mm-hmm. Why? And the Jason Jordan thing, you know, I, I can ask the same question, but not as strong as I am about this one. And, and I'm just not into it. I'm kind of done. SummerSlam was great. End it. Move on. And, mm, Paul, they're, they're stretching it here. Yeah, they're they stretching it. They can't just let it go. And it's got to be because they have absolutely nothing else for these guys to do. So they're just going to keep them in this, which is just awful. Uh and to, to Jordan's credit, I think he got kind of a pop when he tossed out both Dallas and uh, and Curtis from the ring. Uh, so, I mean, it maybe it just depends on crowds for, for Jordan because maybe it's one of those where other people will buy it and maybe the, the Smarks just aren't willing to go along with it right now. Uh, maybe not. I mean, you're right. Maybe the Smarks really just kind of think, uh, uh, you know, and I get that. And I kind of feel maybe partly the same way, maybe not as strongly as they do. I, I like Jason Jordan okay. Um, I think what made this thing so hot for the crowd, especially for just the fans that wanted to come see a show, 
was it was just kind of neat to see that hot moment where you know Jason Jordan's you know doing these amazing things and he's ripping his you know the the straps down and just looking like Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm, That's what's mm-hmm. fun, you know. And I think they pri- honestly kind of try to live uh, like Kurt Angle through Jason Jordan, right? They try to yeah. do that vicariously, and that's what makes it fun, and the crowd gets behind it. But, yes, the people that are smart, that pay more attention, that read every single little detail about the world of wrestling, they are not into it as much. They kind of see behind-the-scenes things and all that. So sometimes you just got to let that go. Sometimes you just got to have fun, mm-hmm. and I think what made it great. I, I kind of let it go myself, and I actually kind of popped inside a little bit for it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was great. Yeah. You know, and it's going to build that heat when you actually have the Miz Taraj taking on Jason Jordan. He can actually say, look, you guys can't handle me. I took out two of you at one time. Let's see what you, else you got. So those are all positive things, in my opinion. Um, but, I mean, think about it. we got a whole Royal Rumble here, and we're only talking about maybe two positive things out of the whole thing. Yeah, it's it's, it's really not a very good segment, but there are small takeaways, like like you were saying. I I, I haven't been super high on the Jason Jordan story just because it, it sort of underwhelmed that delivery and they haven't really done a whole lot with it yet. Um, I'm willing to let this slow burn, though, if they have something big down the road uh, for Jason Jordan, especially if it turns out like maybe he lied and it's a whole big heel tactic to try to get in, turned into this big star on Raw or something like that. Um, I, I, there are a lot of ways to go with it right now. It's still a young storyline, and uh, I'm very much okay with letting it play out for now. And just seeing where it takes us, you know. Cause Agreed. I, I, I do think Jason has a lot to offer, uh, may, at least in the ring. I don't, promo wise, maybe still not exactly where I would like him to be personally. Um, but that, I mean, it's it's a that's one's that's a hard art really to master that a few <laughs> have in the WWE. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's about him and about you know maybe. 65% of the roster. 80% of the roster. Yeah. It's a high, <laughs> <laughs> high number. And we'll talk more about promos later. So, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm right there along with you. I think we both agree. And I, I want to follow the Jason Jordan thing. I really do want to see it happen the way you were saying it's going to happen, which is the heel turn and all that. To me, that's the only saving grace for Jason Jordan in, in, this, in the long run. In the mm-hmm. short term, they're doing a fine job. But in the long run, he does have to do something different. I agree. Uh, and, and maybe not so surprisingly, I think the, the women had a pretty great share of the show tonight, and maybe one of the better parts, uh, obviously the May Young Classic has released its first four episodes today, um, I, I've watched the first two, I'm almost done with the third one, and uh, I've really enjoyed it so far, so if you haven't given it a chance, you had to absolutely do so, and then check back on the uh, W2Mnet.com and everywhere else we are for our, myself, Patrick, and Harry doing some coverage there as I get out of the way of a cheap plug. But <laughs> <Cha-ching>. yeah, <laughs> uh, Emma. First, before we get to the main event, Emma is backstage with Mickey James. Emma talks about trending on Twitter and all these other things, uh, and then Mickey sort of pokes fun at her for for how Nia Jax just absolutely woman handled her last week. And Emma starts going on this huge tirade about how she started the women's revolution, and re- Mickey, it, it, it kind of goes downhill from there, but. Mickey says if she loses this upcoming match with her, she'll tweet whatever Emma wants. But if Emma, if, she, if Mickey wins, Emma can uh, never take credit for starting the women's revolution. They get this out of the way in under two minutes. Emma wins. I, I guess we got to start somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, they've done a little bit of this before. Uh, this is just continuation. Mm-hmm. Look. I, I agree. At least the women got an opportunity here to have a, a you know some you know major time on the show. That's great. I, I definitely think that they need to do that. That's a very positive thing. And, and I'm even behind uh, Emma herself. I think that she really could use a good run because of what they've done with her, and really just to be honest with you, make her look pretty silly. I don't know that this really helped her. I think the, the match itself was okay. The pin was so sloppy. Yeah. It, oof, oh God. Uh, you know, and I just never expected that to be that way. Um, and it didn't, even the last part you have, I, I, well, I'll just say the whole thing with, you know, the match was what it was, but the promos, uh, I, I just, they made her look kind of bad. Like her doing the whole thing of hashtag uh, mean girl or whatever they she was talking about. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm blanking on her name. What's her name? Uh, 
talking Emma? Or are you talking Mickey James? Mickey James, thank you. Hashtag mean Mickey, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it was okay, but man, that, that was a completely different side of Emma. Don't like. I don't like the whole pouty thing. She needs to be strong. She needs to be, you know, like the mean girl herself. She don't need to be the one that's being picked on. So that they kind of let us down there. And then the whole after the match thing, her going, I started the women's revolution, that kind of thing. It was so hokey. It mm-hmm. was so silly. And I, I said all that to say this. I'm really let down by the performance by Emma tonight. And maybe not all her fault. Probably a lot of creative involved. But I don't think it was a strong performance. And I think there's probably fair chances to say both in this process kind of let us down i I think mickey james did fine i don't really have any that big bad things to say about her i just i really expect more out of emma i want to see better things for her and this is not going to help her case i agree with you there uh on the flip side of that coin it's this match is less than two minutes and it i think it's hard to really get yourself going and trying to to do stuff when you only have just a tiny, tiny segment of time to work with. That being said, I don't really have a problem with Emma working under essentially what is probably going to be considered by most to be a delusion, right? That she started the women's revolution. She should take credit for the whole thing. It's a super easy end for a feud with Sasha Banks if they want to do that, because obviously she's one of the big ones over here. And if that carries over to Alexa or Bailey or anybody else, you're good, right? Because it's all women who came during that time frame of this quote unquote women's revolution and everything. So if, if they can find a way to really make this work and turn up the heat and everything like that, I really feel like this could probably do some wonders for Emma. They just have to commit to it. And, and that's, that has not been their strong point with Emma simply because she's been so injury prone recently. And hopefully all that's behind her and they decided to get behind this and really try to hit this out of the park. Yeah, and I agree. And the one thing I'll say is it's not about the fact that, you know, I don't believe in this story that they're going to try to tell. I think it's actually one that makes a ton of sense for everything you just said. It's just that they got to get the delivery right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. I think they're working for it. They're working towards this path and this goal. But I I think that creative needs to make sure they're not putting her in bad situations. And I think Emma needs to work a little little bit harder on this. I think she just kind of, this was not a strong night. I think that she can get better. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this is the end. I don't want people saying, oh, you're just a hater. No, it's not that. It's just that this is a one bad night. Hopefully more better nights are in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and jump to the main event. Uh, leading up to it, you have both Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss talking about their match tonight as it's our rematch from SummerSlam for the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, they get a good 15 minutes here at the end or so. Uh, I, I personally really enjoyed this match. It was slow to start. It definitely got somewhere by the end, though, and, and they're really throwing... A lot of hard blows at each other. A couple of those kicks and knees, and uh, especially the finish, were all particularly brutal. But the, the this is the interesting part. So they decide to stick with the story that Sasha can win it, but she can't defend it as she once again falls short here. Uh, Alexa ends up getting out of the bank statement and ends up spiking Sasha with an absolutely vicious DDT to, to get the victory. And uh, I I don't exactly know where to go with this because Sasha obviously has had a lot of reins under her belt now, but she's never had a chance to really run with it. And I'm curious if it's just maybe people in the back thinking that, you know, the crowd sort of turned on her now because you you get mixed reactions for her every time she comes out for a promo or, or any of that sort of stuff. Whereas Alexa seems to be beloved no matter what she's doing. And then the end here with Naya coming out afterwards and basically turning her back on Alexa from the tenuous relationship they've had on screen. But they, they more bring up the fact that they're friends backstage. Um, this, I'm intrigued. I don't know if they're doing right by Sasha. But we know Alexa is a proven commodity at this point, and I think that's what they're going for here, is that they know what they're going to get from Alexa, and maybe this is sort of telling us where Asuka might show up. Well, that's kind of interesting, and that really could be the case. I 
I, I, you know, I'll just start with the match. I think the match worked. I think, like you said, it was kind of slow at the beginning. I kind of got worried that it was going to be maybe a, a, just kind of a letdown of a match, but they kind of let the momentum build, and that's what you need to do, and they did fine. I think the ending actually was a nice surprise. I, once again, I did not think that the title was going to change hands. I thought it could. But to be honest with you, I thought, no, nah, they're not going to go that route. They're going to keep it on Sasha, and then they'll go to Nia Jax, right? Nia Jax will face Sasha. It's a great story, and we've seen it before on NXT, but that's fine. We're going to see some more of it now. No, they don't go that way, and actually, it's for good and bad. Um, I think it's kind of bad for Sasha because, once again, here you are. You're always the one winning the championship in, in the big moments, but you can't keep it, and that's a big kind of let down for Sasha Banks fans. I think they kind of see that as a you know a, a disappointment because they wanted to have the title for a long run. Mm-hmm. Um, Alexa Bliss once again does something that people want to see, and that's win the championship, be the mean heel, do all the things that she does pretty well. Uh, but the whole thing about this is that you get this great moment where you think, oh, man, the best friends, you know, Alex Bliss and, of course, Nia Jax, both, you know, having a great time. And then when Nia turns on her, wow, that's a great moment. That's something that's really fun because you didn't expect it. You know, you really mm-hmm. thought this was going to be Sasha versus Nia. So now that you have Alexa Bliss versus Nia, who do you hate? And that brings up all those points you were talking about when it comes to, hey, Bliss is already getting all the fandom. So why not have a new person come in as the heel? Mm-hmm. You know, let's get someone that are going to boo instead of them always cheering the heel in this process. I, I don't know where we go with Sasha. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm with you in that. I just think this is not exactly the best thing. Is it going to kill the character? Is it going to kill her process of, you know, gaining some things in the future? No. It's just the fact that right now I don't know how they feel about her. I don't know that they're ready to run with her. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think – Right now in the media moment, you've got so much going for Alexa Bliss. You need someone to kind of feed off that. And the one person needs to feed off it is Nia Jax, really. So I think it's a good thing. I think it's a positive thing in that realm. But I, I do I have some fears for Sasha. Yeah, I I do worry that you know that their constant lack of commitment might might actually play into her overall success just in WWE in general. But it's interesting that they go with Alexa and Nia because honestly, I after tonight, who's the face and who's the heel on that situation? Like Nia is either the jerk here or the face for turning on the universal heel essentially because she does get booed, but like you know, people like uh, Smarks and all the like like that. They they love Alexa because she's she's great at what she does, uh, and I, I maybe it doesn't matter for WWE. Maybe it's just the person they want. And the, and the position of Nia Jax and the person that really has earned it uh, and, and Alexa Bliss because, I mean, the fans have accepted her and they, they've done a really good job, I think, with that character overall. so Well, I, I think it spells it out. When you have Bailey's biggest fan turning over away from Bailey and becoming mm-hmm. Alexa's big, biggest fan, I think that's, that speaks volumes on what they're thinking here. I think that they really feel like, well, Bliss is supposed to be the bad guy, but really, honestly, in the fans' minds, not really the bad guy. Mm-hmm. So we're going to take all that and we'll just, you know, play it off like she's mean. But we're going to have someone who we really want to be mean. We cuz you know they want Nia Jax to be the Braun Strowman of the women's division. Right. That's exactly what they want. Has Nia become that? No. No, and she is not that. Why? Well, because she's lost multiple times in big matches. She has not been that dominant. And I think this is the point where they want to get a little bit of the rub off the hottest women superstar in the Raw division is for the women. So I, I think that's what we're getting here. And they're going to try to push that and push that that way that people have sympathy for the small. Because I mean, look at Alexis. She's what? Five two or something like that. Like I mean, that, she, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and then you got Nia Jax as a monster, mm-hmm. and, and I, I think that already just the picture alone, without even saying anything, says who's the good guy, who's the bad guy in this. So, I, I think that that kind of does something. But you know, I, I'm really kind of curious if that's going to work out well with myself because I don't know that that's going to bring enough eyes and bring enough people to care. But mm-hmm. I think at the moment with Alexa Bliss, people care. So. I don't know. I, I think Sasha Banks maybe even made the biggest question mark here. And, and if you throw in Oscar in this, when is Oscar you know going to show up? And when she does show up, who is she facing? That's another big thing, you know. And 
I, I think that that's exciting just to think about that. But once again, this this is all up in arms. We really don't know what's going to shake out. Yeah, that's very true. Very, very true. Uh, so we're going to turn our attention over to the main event scene now. Uh, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar get a promo. Paul Heyman comes out and basically puts over Braun Strowman as the most worthy challenger in the WWE for Brock Lesnar uh, based strictly off... I mean, obviously, the big history of him just basically dominating everybody in his path, but specifically what he did at SummerSlam, power slamming Brock through two different announce tables and, and basically forcing him to leave on a stretcher for a little while uh, and just keeps talking about all the great things Braun has done, including last week with coming out and getting in Brock's face and the big fight they had there. And then that leads to Heyman to go into the hard sell, essentially, for no mercy, since this will be the title match. And uh, Brock decides to take the mic and just says suplex city, bitch. So uh, <laughs> I, I thought this was fine, really, for what it was. Uh, Paul Heyman really, I think, probably on his game here. And maybe Brock didn't need to make the extra addition, but it, it's nice to hear him chime in every once in a blue moon, I guess. Yeah, I, I think so. I think they need to do it every once in a while. It, it pops the crowd because he never does it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I think it made it good. You know, I, I think the promo is what it was. I mean, you're going to – this is the normal Paul Heyman stuff. As great as he is, right? Paul Heyman is this amazing vocal artist. He has so many great ways of telling a story of putting someone over, tearing someone down. But, you know, eventually after a while, you you, you kind of feel like you've heard it. And you mm -hmm. kind of feel like you know it. So this is one of those where I kind of felt like I could halfway pay attention and I could get the gist of what he was doing. So that was a nice moment when Brock actually did get on the mic and say something. <laughs> it just summed it up in a few words. I right. <laughs> I, I, appreci I kind of appreciated that. So I think that overall they did a good job here. Gave you some uh, uh, of what they're thinking post you know SummerSlam. And yeah, he's setting you up for Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar. I'm game already. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other side of this main event coin is the big contract signing that was announced uh, on WWE.com, and I think if you have WWE's text alerts and all that going for you, you got that there, where John Cena and Roman Reigns will be facing off against each other at no mercy. Uh, so we get the contract signing here, and this is one of those segments where they just decide to throw away all pretense of this being a show and just sort of let him go out there and talk about really what is said by people on the internet all the time. And whether this is how either of them feels is ultimately sort of secondary because the crowd, I felt like bit into this pretty good. Cena talks about how Roman Reigns is a corporate built broken down bootleg version of John Cena but Cena's still here. He's not the Undertaker because Roman Reigns does bring that up. That maybe since he beat Taker, he doesn't know if he needs to face John Cena. And Cena really just keeps sending home zinger after zinger after zinger, telling Roman that, you know, you can't cut a promo. You can't do all these other things because you're fake. Whereas Cena is essentially real. Uh, and Reigns goes on the flip side and basically continues... I think what everybody else has ever said whenever they do segments like this, Cena, you're a part-timer now, you're doing the Today Show, you're doing all these movies, and really you only care about this place whenever they're going to pay you a big check, and uh, turns it around some more and says, you know what, I, I, I honestly, I still don't know if I need to fight you, even though you're bringing up all this other stuff, and uh, Cena just finally sends it home and says, you know what, I want to fight you, um, I've done all these things, uh, for, for WWE, I haven't main evented in five years. I haven't been burying people. I, you know, I, I used what I had to try to elevate people. Uh, but this isn't really about elevation. It's more about showing people what you are and at no mercy is going to do that. Whereas Reigns simply just seems to be here to basically just try to prove Cena wrong. Almost is what I felt like by the end. However, for some reason, we have to bring out Gallus and Anderson, who say that they're not good brothers, they have these huge egos, and uh, they want to beat up a few nerds tonight, which are these two, and uh, boy, the writing's already on the wall for this one. Uh, Cena and Reigns win, shockingly, I know, uh, in about uh, six, seven minutes or so, and uh, basically you have the ending of Cena hitting the AA on Gallus, 
Reigns takes out, uh, or excuse me, uh, Cena hits it on Anderson, and Gallows is taken out by a spear from Reigns, and that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. Uh, it was murder she wrote. Hey, yeah, it, it sure was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angela Lansbury. Uh, you know, I'm just going to talk about the worst thing first, and that is this whole thing with Gallows and Anderson. Uh, there you go. Uh, there's the filler. Uh, mm-hmm. There's some time to waste our time and then pop the crowd who, you know, is wearing the Reigns and Cena t-shirts. There you go. Hand clap for you, WWE. Uh, not really though, from my point of view, I think it sucked. It's just because it was written on the wall what was going to happen. No one cared, uh, at least from my point of view. Um, so th- I don't even need to talk about that. It, it doesn't even matter to the end of the world. Uh, right. what matters here is this promo and this contract signing. I don't know. I've, I've got the first question I'll ask you, Paul, to kind of round out my thoughts on this. Um, now you said this when we were talking about, you know, Nia Jax and Alex Bliss here. Cena, Reigns, who's the heel? Who's the face? Wish I could tell you. Really wish I could tell you. Uh, because Reigns doesn't seem to care at all about Cena, and Cena seems to be here just to be an ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm right there, and I look at this as, okay, the way they're cutting the promo, the way they're going about things, you can be a fan of either or. It doesn't have to really be a heel or face, even though it does kind of seem odd. I look at this and still say to myself, are they really trying to put Reigns in that picture of being like John Cena? Because, man, once Cena started really hitting those zingers on him, it seemed like Reigns had started swearing a lot more. And, you know, those kids in the audience, I mean, I I guess they can take their vitamins and say their prayers. But, man, that was a lot of cussing to be one of those kind of, you know, stand-up guys, you know, backing the kids and I know it's, you know, modern day, you know, that's a lot more, but I, I'm just saying, you know, John Cena, that's not really his thing. He'll say a swear word here or there, but not as much as Man Reigns was going on a little bit of a tangent there. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, but here's the one thing I, I look at and, and I say to myself, why did I enjoy this? And yes, I mean, I, Paul, you may totally disagree with me. I kind of enjoyed this. I kind of started to feel like, man, maybe this is some of the things they wanted to say backstage. Maybe some of this is real. Maybe it's not, but maybe some of this stuff that they're actually spouting out could be a few things that they've really kind of harvested inside themselves. And I think, you know, really, John Cena won it. He won the debate here tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, But I don't okay with that. I really felt like it was a good thing. And not because I'm going to be a Roman Reigns hater, Paul. I'm not sitting here at Roman Soak. It's not about that. It's about the fact that John Cena said some things that are, my God. Let's be honest. They're true, and I, I necessarily don't want him to be true because it's John Cena. But I've got to be honest. He's telling the exact truth. Everything he pretty much said there at the end about, look, the reason I'm a part-timer is because you can't do the job. Like You mm-hmm. you have not got the fan support. You have not gotten the T-shirt sales that I have when I'm just on the Today Show doing other things. I'm still making more money in sales and stuff like that. Why aren't you doing it? Why isn't everybody else doing it? So a lot of this is kind of truth. Some of it's just silly. Some of it's about you know just doing the normal WB promo. But some of this actually kind of cut close to home. So I honestly thought this was the best part of Raw. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't know about yourself. I I thought this was really a a good job building, right? I mean, clearly, uh, what I like the most about this is that they come out here and clearly they already despise each other. Uh, Cena, maybe because Roman Reigns is simply pretending to be something that he's not. And Reigns... It's just continually looking to prove himself, essentially, is what I what I took away from this. And he, I think Roman, obviously, is much better at one side of the coin than the other, and that's his wrestling game. And Cena, a lot's been said about his wrestling game. I, I mean, he's actually, I think, pretty good for what he can do and has really evolved a lot across his time period in wrestling. But is definitely... One of those guys who works best when he's not the best wrestler in the ring, and he's shown that, I think, time and time again with some of the talent that's come through WWE's doors. Reigns uh, may be in that same category, but certainly, I think, has a bit more ability to carry the working boots, uh, as they say. But as far as promos go, like this is this is what we were talking about, really. This is something a lot of the roster can't do, and it's put on display here. This is why Cena has been where he is for so long. He can sell a match. And one segment... 
I think he sold everybody on wanting to watch him beat the crap out of Roman because here's all these things that are true that everybody thinks about Roman. Um, it, I mean, at least if you're on the internet all the time or something like that. But, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious that, what, I mean, Cena feels like he's speaking the truth and Roman is just sort of saying what everybody else has said. And that's kind of where... I think this segment falls uh, falters a little bit because nobody ever really has anything new to say about John because everybody's already said it, you know, and that's, that's really rough. I would have much rather if they skipped the tag team part, they really should have let Roman walk away with some violence here and being able to stand tall because, you know, he needs to show Cena what he is good at and that's punching you in the mouth. That's what he's really good at. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And I think that's the end game here. Mm-hmm. I really feel like that. I think, you know, if early predictions, I think Roman Reigns is the guy because he's there to prove a point. He's there to say, "Look, Cena, I'm taking that torch, even if you're not going to give it to me. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to pass it to me, but I'll take it." And that's what we need to see. I think that you know, part of the reason John Cena is over here on Raw is to do that to, to kind of you know help along this roster where he did a SmackDown and did a few things, maybe not a lot, but he did a few things over there on SmackDown. And I think he's here to do the same for Raw and. Uh, you know, as much as I, uh, you know, I'm not a big, huge fan of both these guys. I think both of them did a pretty okay job here, and I was really happy with it. it to me, it was the better part of Raw. I think Roman Reigns on his side of the coin, I, I like the fact that he really got emotional. You really felt it. And John Cena had made the joke like, look, it took you how long to cut a good promo until I showed up? Five and a half hey, years. Yeah. yeah, five and a half <laughs> years. And I love that because it's really the honest truth. Like for the first time. I felt like I saw Roman Reigns. Like I, I felt like I had never seen him before until he started getting really emotional mm-hmm. about the whole thing. And I think that, you know, hopefully that's a good time for Roman Reigns to review this film, see what he did there, and go forward. And if that's what John Cena is here to do is to build Roman Reigns into something we haven't seen before, I'm game. Let's do it. Let's let's go ahead and make this happen because we do need a Roman Reigns that is strong if – we have to live with this guy for the next 10 to 15 years, right? So yeah. let's do it. Yeah, I, like I said, I got – it's not that I, I'm still down with them maybe pushing Rome into the main event as far as holding the championship right now, but I'm willing to see where this goes. And, I, I mean, we know we're going to get it at some point in time, right? And the, I honestly, I feel like this is how WWE books now is they just wear you down enough to where you're just like, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're wrong on that. You know, I don't think that about that all the time. But you know, let's be honest. Uh, that's that's really the the truth about it. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, well, they're they're going to wear us down even more. Uh, we'll yeah. be that, that that pencil at the very end, shaving mm-hmm. down. That's true. That's very true. Uh, get, we'll get this out of the way before we end with another strong part of the show. Uh, Enzo comes out. He talks about how big he talks about Big Cass's injury and sort of says that Cass got what he deserved for picking on him so much and uh, then brings up that, uh, you know, he he makes some jabs using the Mayweather-McGregor fight and talks about how, you know, I've taken beatings from bigger guys than anybody in 205 Live and now, um, you know, now I'm finally, you know, I th- there's nothing these guys can do that's going to keep me down, essentially. Uh, so this brings on a match against Noam Dar and... This, uh, honestly, it's wasted three minutes, if you ask me. Uh, Enzo looks not very good at all. And I'm not saying Dar is the greatest thing ever, but he, he's not a bad wrestler, and it just it doesn't feel at all like a cruiserweight match at all. It just feels like Enzo's doing stuff, Dar's doing stuff, and finally it ends with Enzo doing uh, an eat defeat to, to get the victory. And that's really about it here. So, I mean, Enzo... Basically here because he's just a great character, and and we talk about how that's something 205 Live really lacks um, over on on the reviews, and and maybe just every time we talk about it on Raw, and Enzo certainly is that, but is it enough to generate interest from a larger audience against Neville, who arguably is equally as good a character as Enzo? Yeah, you know, here's the thing. Enzo is good at something, and that is talking. He is okay at something, and that is wrestling. And uh, maybe okay is giving him a little bit more he deserves. Um, 
You know, I always look at this as, you know, I try to look sometimes at sports analogies, and I kind of find this to be, this is a guy that's a pretty decent running back, right? He can run the ball, but he can't catch. Mm-hmm. There's no way he can catch. He just there's his hands are not built to catch the ball, so he's not dual. And that's the same we're looking at here with Enzo. Is honestly, what do we expect? I mean, two hundred five live is primarily more about wrestling. It's not about the jabbering back and forth. Sure, they do it on two hundred five live. Sure, they do, but they kind of feel like they have to. It's WWE. It's entertainment. Mm-hmm. But really, where you get your gold, where you get the diamonds in the rough out of two hundred five, why people actually do tune in when they do tune in it's for the wrestling it's for those high flyers it's for those guys that just amaze us Enzo Amore is not that he's not going to give us that we know that and for me to believe that they're going to push him here to to take on Neville it's a far-fetched idea for me Mm -hmm. I think it's a little goofy I I think it's just a bad idea overall and I, I used to be a big Enzo fan but once they took him away from Kaz, once they started pushing him into this whole realm of, hey, he's a single superstar, and look at everything he's going to do, my uh, interest is very, very waned. Mm-hmm. Um, and just Enzo has become somebody that I just don't care for. I, I, it's not that I hate the guy. just I just don't know that I'm a fan anymore of his. I don't really know if I would consider myself one either. I, I think he would be terrific if they could find another tag team partner for him because he really does need somebody else to carry the other half of the coin. And I will say this, Enzo can certainly sell a beating very well, uh, which is not something everybody can do. And I think he just sort of has a knack for it. Obviously, you know, Obviously, it's because he's small and working with bigger guys, but he loses all of that luster in 205. And unless he's just going to be out there to be a stunt crash dummy for those guys... I don't see a lot of success in this run, so... Yeah. It's almost like he watched a bunch of Tommy Dreamer videos and said, I'm going to be that guy. Mm-hmm. Just without the violence. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and not a whole lot of ability to back it up, either. So. Exactly, yeah. Uh, speaking of guys with ability is what this tag team feud is right now. Uh, so tonight you have Seth Rollins take on Cesaro. Uh, there's some brawling at ringside between Dean and Sheamus. Uh, as Sheamus tries to sort of slip up Rollins and, and uh, try to give Cesaro the advantage. However, that ends up distracting Rollins more than anything, and he walks into a big uppercut from Cesaro. This leads directly into another match with Dean Ambrose and Sheamus, where Dean ends up coming out on top because Rollins hits a big flying knee on Sheamus that allows Ambrose to pick up the win uh, and sort of a bit of revenge. So they go 50-50 here. I can't... I can't really complain too much. The, the, both of these matches were good, and I, I legitimately enjoy all four guys, so I don't really know if this moves anything along, but they're trying to just sell you that they're on equal footing, and you could you can believe that, I think, just because of the pedigree they bring as far as being good in-ring guys. Yeah, you know, I, you just got to look up in the air and see that plane. Paul, mm-hmm. you just got to see it. it. It's just flying around. It can't land. It's just stuck in that holding pattern. And that's what we're here. Uh, and we're doing it this whole feud as it is. I, I, I'm i with you. I, I like all four guys. I, I'm pretty, uh, you know, happy to see, you know, the tag champs, uh, Seth Rollins and Ambrose and doing their thing. And both of them are, you know, at least entertaining. And, of course, you know, I'm a huge Cesaro fan. I think Cesaro is pretty sweet. I mean, he's amazing at what he does, and Sheamus is okay, too. Mm-hmm. So all that being said, this is just kind of okay matches. They're, they're good. I mean, they give you some great moments, but you kind of saw everything coming, right? You saw one of them's going to win, and the other team's going to have a guy win. We've already seen this. This has been done. They did this about a month ago. I, I, I'm, old, I'm okay with it. Here's the one thing. I just got to say this. Thank you, WWE. You helped me tonight on Monday Night Raw. I had to review this show. Very happy to review this show. I love doing it. I had a fantasy football draft. You guys gave me the perfect opportunity to focus on my (laughs) fantasy football draft because all I had to do is look up, select uh, Aaron Rodgers. Oh, okay. Great job, Cesaro. I love it. Okay, down back to my phone. Okay, you know, you know. Brandon Marshall, thank you. Oh, good job, Seamus. You know, that, <laughs> uh, that's the way it worked out for me. And that's okay. Sometimes you got to have those matches. They can't all be, you know, home runs. 
But I think that this was decent, but nothing special. I don't feel like I walked away with anything I didn't know before this episode of Monday Night Raw about this feud. And, and that's very true. Uh, basically, they just give you some wrestling to show that that's what these guys do very well, and they're even at it, and we can move on from there. Because that's the entire Raw review right there, Gary. So we just got to rate this bad boy. What you going to give it? Oh, man, do you want us to really rate this? Because, man, oof. Um, I, I'm going to give it a five. Yep. I I, uh, I I wish I could say a lot of positive things, okay? And once again, I've got to give credit to that promo with Reigns and Cena. I think it was a lot better done than I would have ever given it credit for. When I heard about it, I thought, that's a segment I'm going to hate. Let's just go ahead and mark it down. I'm going to hate it. I actually, quite a bit different. I loved it uh, compared to what I was really expecting. And maybe that's why I use the word love because it was better than I ever expected it to be. And then, of course, you know, title changing hands with a women's title, Alexa Bliss, you know, gaining her next title run. I I think it was a fun experience. Um, But that's about it. That's all we had to hang our hats on. The rest of this was just kind of blah. Just did not care. Uh, I I honestly could have watched highlights of this Raw and got as much as I got out of it tonight watching the full show. So not a good sign for me. A five is where I stand. I think I'm right there with you at a five. I enjoyed exactly one half of this show. Uh, The Cena Reigns segment was was good. I hated how they ended that by having them tag up immediately. But what you going to do? It's WWE, and that's a trope they rely on. Thought the main event was good. Thought the tag team stuff was good. Honestly, you could have lived without everything else. You cut away half the show, uh, and you got a pretty good one on your hands. And there are a lot of other problems um, with with the bad stuff here, but they're just so many that they, they really almost take away from enjoying a full three hours here. So I think a five is spot on, Gary, and that's that's going to do it. Yeah, so uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Of course, make sure you tune in tomorrow when we do our SmackDown Live and 205 Live reviews. Of course, Sean and I will actually be doing that show for you tomorrow uh, because Paul, Harry, and, of course, Patrick Ketza are going to be doing the May Young Classic. That's right. They're going to be covering all four nights that they gave out there on the WB network for you guys to tune in. So make sure you go watch them. If you haven't watched them yet, go watch them. Then check out that May Young Classic show. Those guys are going to do an amazing job. If you haven't already heard it, they've done an episode basically giving you the tune up for everything that's going to be taking place in this May Young Classic. So go check out that show. And of course, this current show coming up for you tomorrow. We are all going to be busy and really excited about doing those shows. Plus we'll be doing a lot of other great things. Of course, come check out wrestling of the max. That's right. We'll be doing a show following this one technically uh and then they'll give force give you ring of honor along with some of the biggest wrestling news of the week and you know a lot of other good content you're not going to want to miss out on and of course the way you go find all the stuff i just talked about w2mnet.com don't forget to go there also go rate subscribe and review over at wrestling of the max get you everything that you want from us and we once again love thank and appreciate all of you who have already done all that great stuff and already checked this out make sure you share us with your friends and let them know about us as well and and once again our hearts go out to all those in south texas we love you our prayers our hopes and wishes are all with you tonight and until next time we will see you guys down the road have a good one guys the following podcast is a w2m network original production Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.